Welcome back to this module on insurance. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over the first type of property insurance, which is automobile insurance. Property insurance has two main purposes. The first is that it is used to cover damages to your personal property. So that will include automobile, home, and other personal items uh, from your laptop to jewelry or heirloom furniture. Uh, casualty insurance covered uh, payments that you need to make to other people because of injuries or damage to their property uh, because of incidents that relates to you. So property insurance cover your own procession, whereas casualty insurance cover damages to another uh, other individuals. So for example, you could be uh, held legally responsible even if the damage is not your fault. So um, sometimes it's just simple negligence, and this is uh, very hard to define. Uh, so for example, um, you may be at work when there's a snowstorm and you are not able to shuffle your driveway or your walkway until you get home. That seems unreasonable on the surface that you would be at home uh, shuffling snow when you need to be at work, but that is not uh, a valid reason uh, to not shovel your driveway. Uh, so that can be a tricky situation. And that is why sometimes we need insurance. Okay. So the primary function of property and cash insurance is to uh, avoid situation where the wealth that you have accumulated, whether in the form of a home or a car uh, or your savings account that, um, and therefore when something bad happened, uh, you are not left without the property that you have accumulated. Now let's take a look in more details about the first type of property insurance, which is automobile insurance. Remember that insurance laws are governed by states. So there's no uniform federal laws in the US that governs all automobile insurance. Each state's requirements are, and regulations are very different. So most they have some kind of financial responsibility laws. And the uh, purpose of the law is to require drivers to purchase a minimum amount of liability insurance. Um, Again, that varies state by state. There are actually states that do not have such type of laws. So if you live in a state that does not have a requirement for automobile insurance and you don't and you get hit by another driver, um, there is no uh, insurance coverage. So if the person who hit you or the driver who hit you uh, does not have personal wealth to pay for the damage, then you will be left with no re uh, recompense. And some states have so-called no-fault auto insurance. Uh, what that means is that in the in the states that have no-fault auto insurance, you do not have to prove wrongdoing in order to get compensation for damages. So in the case in this in the case of a no-fault insurance, then the whoever has insurance will get compensated by the insurance agency based on their own policy, regardless of who caused the accident. Uh, the bottom line of a no fault insurance law is that it makes reimbursement a lot faster because if there is a fault, meaning if it is not no fault, then your even if you have insurance on your car, but if the other person is at fault, then the law allows your own insurance company to try to get the other insurance company to pay you first. And anything that is not paid by the, the other party will then be compensated by your own insurance. As you can see, that create a situation where the insurance company can take a long time to go back and forth in terms of who is paying for what. In a no fault state, that doesn't happen. Whoever you are working with, your own insurance company, they pay for your own damages. As you can see, insurance laws vary greatly state by state. So it's a good idea for you to do some research right now. So pause this video and find out what type of law 
uh, apply specifically to your state. Uh, the two that you definitely want to look at is whether or not your state is a no-fault state because that definitely have a great impact uh, on your uh, on how easy it is for you to claim um, reimbursement in case of an accident. Next, we're going to go for different types of coverage. Uh, in general, there is Part A, and this is the liability coverage. This cover another driver in case of an accident. This is the coverage that, that is required under the financial responsibility law if that applies to your particular state. Part B is medical payment coverage. Part C is uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage. And Part D is collusion and comprehensive damage. You will notice that we are going over a lot of terminology in this module. Uh, that is actually the intent because in order for you to become a well-informed consumer, you need to know what these terms mean. And when you are presented with an automobile insurance for the first time, the term and the words that are in the contract can be very confusing. And we're gonna demystify all those terms here. Part A is called liability coverage. So as it indicated, this cover uh, damages or payments that you're responsible for when there is injury caused by an accident that you are involved in. Uh, and those uh, damages can include everything from legal, medical expenses, lost wages, damage to the car, and so forth. Um, so property damage is uh, to their property, so that will be their car, or if you run into a building or a telephone pole, uh, all of those uh, will be covered under the property damage liability. And the one of the things that about insurance and other financial terms in general is that they tend to be very brief and they use a specific format. So when you look at the policy, uh, the coverage is oftentimes described in the following format. So it's three sets of numbers. So for example, the three sets of number is 100, 350. What that means is it translates into a $100,000 per person injured in an, in an accident. So, so this part, the 100,000 is the bodily injure, injury liability coverage. So it covers up to $100,000. Uh, and then is 300,000 for everybody combined. So let's say you hit a car and there are four people in there is $100,000 per person limit and 300,000 for all people combined. Um, and then the last part is for property damage. And so that's the property portion. And in here, 50 here means 50. That's the property damage. The minimum amount that you need to purchase varies state by state. Um, whether or not you need more than the minimum amount depends on your personal situation. So remember, this is the amount that will be paid by the insurance company. You are still personally liable for all damages. So anything that is not covered by the insurance but you are personally responsible for will be paid out of your personal funds. So whether it's savings account, your investment account, and so forth. So if you want to protect your own wealth, then and you have a lot more than what the minimum uh, legal requirement is, you may want to consider buying a higher level of coverage. So again, that is depending on your own personal wealth. Part B is called medical payments coverage. This coverage pays for medical payments for you, the driver of the car, and other passengers in your car if you happen to be at fault at an accident. And this only applies to your car and the amount uh, varies by insurance company and this is not required by law. So whether or not this coverage is necessary depends on your own personal situation. If you have very good health insurance, then this may not be necessary because your medical care cost is limited 
because of your health insurance. But if your own personal health insurance is not very good, then you may want to consider having medical payment coverage. Um, the same is true for other potential people in your car. Uh, if you have good family health insurance and the people who mostly ride in your car is the fam uh, family members, that this may not be an important coverage. Um, but on the other hand, if you have poor health insurance, then this may be useful uh, coverage to add to your overall policy. Part C is uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage. So under, uh, uninsured motorist coverage, as the name implies, means that it covers any damages uh, that has to, uh, when the other driver who is not insured, um, and most importantly, when the other driver is not identified. So all these are still about bodily injury. So if you get hurt by someone who hit and run, then there is no uh, way to find the responsible parties. But if your own policy has this uh, coverage, then you will still be insured regardless of the other party. Uh, Underinsurer is similar. Uh, so let's say you get hit and your medical expense comes up to $150,000, but the other insure, the other uh, driver only have policy that cover up to $100,000. Then if you have Part C coverage on your own policy, then your own policy will pay for the additional $50,000 that is not covered by the other driver's policy. So this, again, both underinsured and uninsured motorist coverage refers to uh, bodily injury. So these are me medical expenses experienced by you and your passengers. The last part is part D. This is called collusion and comprehensive. Uh, collusion coverage uh, insures against, against uh, damages to your car because of an accident. So, uh, and this is again, whether or not you're at fault. If you have a no fault state, then it, is, it doesn't matter. If you're at, at fault state, uh, then having, part, having uh, part D coverage is important. So this uh, part D coverage will um, pay for damages to your car in the case of an accident. And this is important to distinguish comprehensive coverage. Compre comprehensive coverage ins ensure against any damages to your car other than, a, uh, other than an accident. So, uh, so for example, if you park your car in, on the street and there's a flood uh, or your car get uh, damage because there was a wild party after a victory uh, a football game, uh, those are not covered by collusion. Those will be covered by comprehensive. Typically, if you have a loan or a lease on your car, the mortgage company or the lender will require both collusion and comprehensive coverage. How do you decide how much insurance to buy, which of course affects your insurance premium? Uh, when we talk about um, choosing a car, we emphasize that it's important to take into account insurance cost because insurance cost can be a significant portion of your total ownership cost. So for personal factor, um, this, uh, your age, obviously very uh, important. Uh, there, uh, there is a, uh, when you are very young, so from 16, 17, 18, up to uh, mid-20s, uh, that is considered a high-risk age by the insurance company, mostly because those drivers in that age group has limited experience. Uh, and also, once you get much older, in your 70s and 80s, um, and then the other is your own personal driving record. If you have a number of speeding tickets, then your insurance premium will be a lot higher. Uh, mileage, how, how far you live from your uh, work, uh, and also location, whether uh, you live in a, uh, a big city uh, or in a suburb or in a rural area, those will all affect your premium. Other factors that you may not think about is uh, credit score. Your credit score can be part of the formula that the insurance company use to determine your uh, insurance premium. Uh, if you are young, your school grade actually can be a factor. Uh, you can get a discount if you have good grade in school. Another factor that affects 
that your insurance premium is your car. Uh, the year, make, and model of your car, uh, that uh, because those affect uh, collusion and repair costs, that may be obvious. A more expensive car will have a higher repair cost. But another factor that may not enter your uh, consideration is how often a car gets stolen. Uh, you may be surprised when you are looking at insurance that some relatively in inexpensive cars turns out to have a very high insurance premium. And the reason is because they are a high, they are a high target for uh, theft. So uh, as we say, this is, uh, you may be surprised that the insurance premium for a cheaper car can be higher uh, than a more expensive car. So a more expensive car that has um, alarm, for example, have theft deterrent system um, and have high safety feature, uh, lane assist, turning, warning, uh, those can all work to reduce your risk premium. So, and the other thing that uh, may not be uh, uh, widely known is that a four-door car typically have lower risk premium than or insurance premium than a two-door car. So when you do your car purchase, make sure you do your insurance uh, research. Another way that you can uh, control your insurance premium is to change the deductible. Deductible is the amount that you have to pay before the insurance start paying for uh, the damages. So a higher deductible usually reduces the premium. So how do you decide on an insurance policy as well as an agency? We, so first of all, Decide on the type of coverage and the amount of coverage ahead of time. Once you know the type of coverage and the amount that you want, uh, and decide on the deductible amount. There are other things that you may want to think about that will add to your insurance premium, but it can be important in case something does happen. Uh, so that includes towing. So if you get into an accident and your car needs to be towed, how far will the insurance cover the towing fee? Because they can be expensive. It can be hundreds of dollars to tow your car from the place of accident to the repair shop that is close to your home. Uh, your glass coverage is a very unique thing uh, depending on where you live. Uh, if you live in a high construction zone, you may have uh, glass, uh, glass replacement uh, quite often. Um, and then rental car insurance, uh, rental car reimbursement has to do with uh, the insurance company actually pay for the usage of a rental car while your car is being repaired. So again, if you have collusion and uh, comprehensive coverage, you may want to look at how much um, rental reimbursement is included. And that is an important part depending on, again, your personal wealth. If you have to go to work, but you have the ability to pay for a rental car if necessary, or if you have a second car in your home, or if you live in a place where there's public transportation as a substitute, you may not need a rental car reimbursement. On the other hand, if you rely on your car to go to work and you can't really afford to rent a car, which can be anywhere between um, 50 to $100 a day to keep transportation available to you, then this is an important thing to include in your insurance coverage. So once you have decided what you want and what you need, then it's a good idea to get multiple quotes from multiple agencies, and then you can negotiate. Uh, and finally, you want to decide on the type of service that you need. We already talked about that. Do you want a local office? Do you need someone that you can talk to in person? Um, are you comfortable with filing claim and dealing with um, all the process that associated with insurance online? And if you are comfortable with that, then go on, go with an online agency, and those typically have a lower cost. Finally, now that you have insurance coverage, what happens if you do get into an auto accident? Uh, this is not a if event, this is more a when event because most of, most of us uh, have fender benders sometime in our life. So the first thing to do is contact a police um, so that you have a police record. 
uh, you want to get the insurance information from the other driver. If there are other witnesses around, get their contact information so that if the insurance or the police need to contact them, they will be available to, um, to testify again, uh, about what happened. A good idea to take pictures. Uh, nowadays, everybody has a cell phone with a camera that, you know, to record the damage at the spot. Uh, write down as much detail as you can for the accident. Get a copy of the police report. So again, with a cell phone, taking pictures is probably the best way to uh, get down specifics about the accident because during an accident, you would likely be very stressed and it's not easy to remember details. File a claim as soon as possible and then make sure that you save any receipt related to uh, the uh, the claim. So it can be anything from uh, rental um, cost for a replacement car uh, and repair and repair damages to the uh, car itself. Or if you need to have um, medical care, make sure you save all those receipts. Hopefully you will not be involved in any accident anytime soon. Uh, we will, but if you do, now you know what to do. We will pause the video here. In the next video, we're going to go over homeowners insurance. See you soon.